Hi, thanks for checking out my video. My name is Carrie, and today I would like to demonstrate how to make the medical mask on the Baby Lock Triumph. So this technique will be transferable to other machines as well, like the a cover stitch machine or other combo machines. So as long as you have the cover stitch capability on your machine and you have an adapter that will make your life a lot easier, then um, hopefully the techniques and tips that I'm gonna give you today will make your life a lot easier and make this assembly a lot faster. I know there's a ton of videos out there. None of them are the perfect solution or the one solution for everything. So um, I've watched a couple of videos and read up a little bit. And the videos that I watched were with Deb Canham and Missouri Star Quilt Company. Um, so I've kind of taken a combination of both of those techniques. I was thinking about how I wanted to make masks. Um, and so I took those, took some of my own ideas, came up with some techniques that I didn't really see in the video, and hopefully they'll help you and um, if you choose to do the same thing. So this is the mask that I'm gonna be um, demonstrating. This is the one that I've been using. I've made probably between 30 and 40 of them so far. So it has an obvious outside fun fabric. So um, a lot of them are calling for flannel to be on the inside. Um, I tried that on a few and I just thought the flannel was a little too thick and a little too hot. For I have had to sit with a family member um, for long periods of time with the masks on and if I would have had that on it would have been pretty hot and uncomfortable and I live in Florida so if you live in live somewhere warm and you probably would not want some flannel on there holding that heat in if you're in a hospital setting or somewhere where you decide that you want to use your mask so what I've seen is um, either use a solid fabric on the inside, so it's obvious if people set them down and they grab them again, or if they put them in the washing machine, um, what have you, that they, they know which side goes to the inside of the face. Um, I've been using just the wrong side of the fabric. Uh, I have a ton of this fabric, so it's good for the lining, and I'm not gonna lose any sleep using up all of this fabric, so that's what I put on the inside. And then I'm just trying to keep it fun and, uh, you know, get some fun fabrics to show on the outside. So at least if someone's looking at someone and they have funny, colorful fabrics on there, you know, it'll be a dismal situation, but at least that might bring a little bit of a smile to someone's face. Um, so what do you need? You need two rectangles. For the adult size, it's six inches by nine inches. So you need two of those, one to show and then one for the lining. You need binding strips. We're gonna talk quite a bit about that. And then I also included a pipe cleaner in here to form to the nose. So when you put it up there, it's gonna to clip to the nose a little bit better. You can use something like a pipe cleaner, floral wiring these for decorations, and or um, beading wire. So anything like that that you have that might work, give it a try, see if you like it. Um, of course, I'm gonna need my iron, and then I'm gonna need a, a marking tool. So I'm gonna talk about that a little bit more when I demonstrate. Uh, so let's talk about how I am using my different tools. So if you've purchased the kit that has all the fancy feet with your machine, this is a great opportunity for you to dive in and get familiar with them. So this is the booklet that comes with the uh, with all the feet that I have. And so I get a lot of my settings and that in there. So I'm going to be using two, one foot and an attachment. So I want to show you in here, I'm going to be using the cover chain stitch foot. So here you can see it's a little bit narrower. It has three lines on there. The regular foot has five lines to mark on the needles. So I like having this foot. It just works a little bit better and um, the bias, the binding will feed a little bit um, smoother when you use that. I'm going to be using the knit woven double fold bias binder. So I'll show that in a few minutes. But if you have this double fold bias binder, it looks a little bit different than what I'm gonna show you in a minute. That will work too. And if you have a cover stitch machine, I believe you have to use this attachment because you don't have the availability to use the other one. Um, so there's just some limitations between all the machines on what you can and can't use. This is probably available on most of the machines that will do this, um, this technique. The one that I'm gonna be using, and there's two sizes on this one, at least for the Triumph. I, I would probably recommend using the smaller one just so the straps are skinnier when people are tying it around their head. But you can certainly use the larger one if you need to or if that's the only attachment you have. 
The knit woven binder is this funky thing that has this out the end. Um, so it looks intimidating. However, once you learn how to use it and you start using it, you will probably fall in love with it. It has 10 sizes. I'm gonna be using the smallest one for mine. I feel that it gives the straps a good feel and they're not too bulky. But if you have the bigger straps, by all means, and that's what you wanna use and you don't have that eight millimeter, give it a try and see what you think. So I will show you the setup on my machine. I'm gonna be using a three thread stitch with the left and the middle needle. And I'll show you what that means later. So prep work. What do you need to do to get started? Of course, you need to cut your squares, excuse me, your rectangles, six by nine inches for the adult size. You're going to need to cut some binding, binding here, and then a pipe cleaner or some metal or something to put on that nose piece that I described earlier. So one thing I wanna point out is when I cut my binding, I thought this was pretty clever how I came up with this idea. Maybe you've seen it before, maybe you're already doing it, but I haven't seen anybody do this, so I wanted to take a chance to do this. So you need to mark where you're going to start putting the mask in the binding. So you're gonna have all of this that's just going through, running through your machine, running through your machine, and then you need to know where to start to put the mask in. That's at about four and a half inches. Um, it's the, you want it to be centered, so centering it from the fold of the fabric. So this is the fold of the fabric, and what we're using is one width of the fabric. So I have this laid out, it's one width. I'm going to be cutting my, the width that I need for my adapter on my machine. And I wanna mark four and a half inches from the fold. This will make more sense when I demo on the machine. So you take this and you make your mark. I recommend using lighter fabric with a darker marking tool only because when you're, you'll see when you're using it, it's a little bit easier to follow that mark. But if you're using dark fabric and you have a light marking tool and it's chalk or something like that, it'll work. Um, you just wanna have that mark. So now, instead of marking individual strips when I have them cut, I already have it, mark, have it marked. And when I cut it, that mark's gonna be there for me. The next thing, so what I'm using is some pipe cleaners. I don't even remember why I have these. These are called fuzzy sticks. And they are about 10 inches long. I don't need them 10 inches long. So what I did was I cut them in half. So here is a regular one. And then this is one that I have cut. I know it's a little bit hard to see with this camera, but I cut them in half. And how do I do that? I'm definitely not using my fabric scissors. So what I'm doing is I uh, lay these out. I can just lay them out here. If I line it up here on the 10 inch mark, like I said, they are about almost 12 inches down here. So I'm gonna go here in the middle and at the six inch mark, I'm going to use these medical type EMTs, carry them around. I think the emergency room usually has them. So I can cut quite a few of these um, pipe cleaners at the same time with just one swipe or one um, cut with these heavy duty cutters. And then I don't have to worry about hurting any of my tools that I use for other things. So now here we are and we are ready to actually start doing some of the assembly work. So I have two rectangles. Remember this was my lining and this is the fabric that I wanna have on the outside of the mask. So I'm gonna lay this one face up because the wrong side will be on the bottom. And then I also want this one face up because that's what I want to show. So I just line them up. They don't have to be exactly perfect, but they're pretty close. And I'm gonna make two pleats. So I fold it down, fold it up, fold it down again, and fold it up. Once you do this a few times, um, it'll get easier and easier, easier, and you'll know where to make those folds and how it feels. So just give, give be patient with yourself. Give yourself a couple tries. And um, all you need to do now, lots of heat, lots of steam. I do not pin these. 
I'm not a pinner in general unless I absolutely have to. Um, rule of thumb on any serger is to not use pins. Uh, maybe use a clip. If you feel like you really need to use something, you can put a clip on the end. I've made several of these so far and really just having it ironed with a nice hot iron with some steam is going to keep it where you need it. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to sew these edges and put that binding on the sides. So what does that look like? I recommend doing some chain stitching, chain piecing. So if you're a quilter, I'm sure you're familiar with that. Maybe if you're not a quilter, you've heard what that means. But basically, you're going to run them uh, just next to each other and run it through one continuous binding so you're not constantly cutting that binding and starting a new strip. You can have one long piece of binding and just put them all together. Then what I would do is cut these apart and then go down the other side and put the uh, binding on those edges. So... Once you have that done, your mask is gonna look like this. So you see I have the binding on this side and I have binding on this side. And they don't match. Have fun with this, they don't have to match. No one's really gonna be paying that close of attention anyway. They're gonna be dealing with other things other than what their mask looks like. So if they notice it, they'll get a good laugh out of it. If they don't notice it, who cares? You can use up a lot of your scrap. So this is the stitch on the back, and this is the stitch on the front. So what I want to do now is show you my machine settings. So let's look up here at the thread. You do not need to have all matching thread. Um, so if you have some thread that the color maybe you're not too fond of or whatever, take that out and uh, start using it. Or if you want to make it fun and more vibrant, whatever, you know, just you, they don't have to match. They can if you want. They don't need to. So I'm just kind of using some of the older stuff in my stash. And the whites are in the needle. And then this is the back, the red on the cover, on the cover stitch. So I have it set up for the left two needles um, on the chain stitch. So... That's the narrower foot that I was talking about before, so it only covers here. The, the regular foot comes all the way out to here, so it's quite a bit wider. So that fabric's gonna be nice and snug under there, and that's the foot I like to use. You don't have to, but I recommend at least giving it a try. Then this is the Knit Woven Bias Binder. I love this thing. Um, it attaches to the machine here. The fabric's gonna go into the machine here. And that's where your fold is gonna be, that's gonna be the outside of the binding. So once you line this up where it needs to go, and you, you probably have to take a little bit of time to set it up on your machine, and that's okay. Doing that's gonna save you a lot of time later. Um, I'm gonna demo this in just a second to see how I feed that in there. So the next thing I wanna point out is my speed. So this machine has a speed setting, and I do not recommend going really fast. In fact, when I first started doing this, I probably had this over here. And since I've been doing quite a few, I have bumped up the speed a little bit, but really, if you start going a lot faster than that, then you run the risk of your binding, um, you know, getting tangled and twisted, and then you're just gonna be mad and upset and have to tear stuff apart or throw it away, and you don't wanna do that. So, next thing we're gonna do is, I'm gonna show you how I get my binding started and get that pipe cleaner along the nose of the mask. Here is my stash of binding that I have by my machine. So these that are marked are the ones that are gonna be along the top and the bottom of the mask. But right next here, I have a bunch of scraps. Maybe I had to scrap a mask because something happened with the binding, or maybe I just had a little bit of leftover fabric and it was wide enough that I could make some binding. So these strips are perfect when you're doing your chain stitching on the edges. So it's only a few inches long. You, you want it a little bit longer than what you're gonna need on your mask, but if you have something that's this long, you can get two, at least two masks um, the size on there. So it's worth your time to take some of these leftovers, or if you have a stash of scraps that you don't know what to do with and they've been sitting around for a while, um, you can always cut those down into strips too. 
All right, so I'm gonna attach the top nose piece so that we're gonna put that pipe cleaner around here in the middle. So you saw my um, bias binding, and it's not on the bias, it's binding, that was sitting there and I had the mark, all the markings were up. So I'm gonna lay this here. I'm gonna grab one of my binding strips. I'm gonna take the corners here, the end, if I can get it in the camera here. There it is. I'm going to just clip a little bit of these corners off. There are lots of other videos out there on how to set up and use your bias binder. So this really isn't about how to use it. It's more about how to assemble these masks using that technique. Um, but you're gonna wanna cut those corners. I can also see where I have that mark. So it's very visible. And if I want to iron it later and get rid of it, that's why I used a heat pen. So I can always use the iron and get rid of that mark. I have yet to do that. I don't think it's distracting on the masks at all. No one's going to notice. So I'm going to set this up, and um, which is fairly simple. Again, this is not a video about how to use the bias binder, but... I would just want you to know that it's really not that difficult. Once you have the hang of it, it should go pretty smoothly when you uh, change from one binding to the other. So what I'm going to do to get this started is I'm going to have my foot up. I'm going to crank the hand wheel so that my needles are up. I've pushed my fabric through. I'm going to use my tweezers here. I'm going to pull this back just so that it's right underneath the needles. Remember, this is the end of the strap, so it doesn't have to be perfect on the end. We're gonna tie those off anyway, and it's gonna secure it. So I'm gonna put the foot down. This is one thing that I wanted to point out that I've been doing. Um, usually it'll feed right through and you don't have any problems with it, but I recommend grabbing this tail, and not hard, just kinda of keep, just kinda of tug it, because those threads are gonna attach, and you're gonna be able to just to pull that through, get it through those feed dogs, so that the binding goes more smoothly. So it's just started here. Now out here with my right hand, I have my right thumb where this mark is, just so I can keep an eye on it. And I'm gonna watch it feed through the machine. I'm not going really fast. I'm watching the mark go through the binder. When it gets right out, out, out of here, that's when I'm gonna start attaching the mask. So I can see it. Don't worry, if it gets a little bit under here, it's fine. No one's gonna notice as long as it's not way back and um, you know they're not gonna know if it's perfectly centered or not. So now I'm taking the mask and I'm just gonna feed this in here and line up this edge to where that mark is. Feed it through a little bit. Now, this part, I eyeball this part. Now I need my pipe cleaner because I'm working on the nose piece. So here's my pipe cleaner. I'm going to fold it in half. I tried it with just one uh, layer. I, did, I just didn't like the way that it felt in the, felt in the mask. I thought that you really couldn't tell it was there and it wouldn't do much good. So for this particular pipe cleaner, I'm folding it over. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna lay it on the mask and I'm gonna eyeball this. So I don't mark this piece. If you need to mark it, by all means do that. I just don't. It doesn't have to be perfect. As long as it's pretty close, it's gonna get the job done. So I'm taking my two raw edges of the pipe cleaner. This is just how I've been doing it. It probably works just fine the other way. I'm putting this pretty much in the center of the mask on the edge. And what it's gonna do is it's gonna feed in close to that bias binder so that it's on the outside underneath where that fold goes. So I need to run this through a little bit more. I'm pushing it in there. And this is really thin so I have not damaged a needle or had any issues with doing this. Um, 
So it's been going pretty smoothly, but I said this wire in here is not very thick. So I'm just guiding it in there. I'm keeping the edge of the mask into the where the fold is on the binding. Not going real fast. And I'm just gonna let it feed through. Now, when I get to the end, I wanna go ahead and make a thread chain that comes out the back because when I put on the next binding, I wanna be able to pull that, th that chain thread just to give a little tug and pull it a little bit through there to, to keep everything moving smoothly. So there's my thread chain. And then when I'm done and I cut that, what I like to do, while it's already in my hand, I don't have to go through and miss any or touch it again or pull things out. While I'm doing this piece, I go ahead and tie a knot on the end of this end. And I need to grab the other end where it started. So I'm gonna grab this end. I'm gonna cut off this extra thread because nobody needs that. And I'm gonna tie this off. Again, it keeps me from handling the mask again if I just do it when I put this binding in there. So I like to just to do a lot of things at one time so I don't have to pick up the mask and worry about doing something else that I could do while I'm assembling it. So I have my metal in the middle for the nose piece. I consider the bigger fold the top of the mask, so that's where I put it. And then what I would do to finish this off is just turn it over, get me another binding strip, and run it through using that mark like I showed you. And then you're all set and you're finished and you're ready to donate that and get on with your day. So thanks again for watching my video. I hope that you learned a thing or two. And um, what I wanna do now is talk a little bit about ergonomics. So for those of you, a lot of people don't know, my major when I was in college was manufacturing. And I've had numerous manufacturing supervisory jobs over the years and learned a lot about assembly work, things of that nature. So. You definitely want to keep ergonomics in mind. Um, I'm sure if you've been sewing for a long time and you've had shoulder problems or elbow issues or back problems, you are very aware of how important this is. Um, so I recommend doing small batches, maybe a batch of five, 10, maybe up to 15. I wouldn't do more than 20 at a time because you want to vary your movement. You don't want to cut for two hours at a time and then iron two hours at a time and then sit at your machine for two hours at a time or however long those timeframes would be. So you wanna vary that, and I think a good balance of that would be cut up you know, 10 or 15 of them, iron them, come over, and so you're, you're not stuck at one station for a long time. Um, so every once in a while, if you're gonna be making a lot of these masks, I think they're gonna be in demand for a while. You're probably gonna make a lot of them, and you wanna make a lot of them, but every once in a while, throw something in there for you just something small, or maybe, you know, somebody in your household needs some pants hemmed or fixed or whatever. Vary that a little bit because then you're going to change up your motion. You're not going to be stuck sitting in the same spot the entire time doing the exact same movement with the same project. So keep that, just keep that in mind. Every once in a while, do something small for yourself or for somebody else. Um, don't forget to hydrate. It's very easy, you know, throughout the day, if you're working on these for a long time, to forget to drink some water or to eat some food. So make sure you eat your food. Um, you might want to balance that with some of the good stuff and not just M&Ms the whole day. Um, so like I told you before, some of the sources that I've used for this is Missouri Star Quilt Company has a great tutorial out there. She just uses a regular sewing machine. Um, Deb Canham, she is a great surging instructor. She is a Baby Lock certified instructor. I've taken a lot of her classes. She does a great job and has tons of resources out there. Gail Yellen. I have watched several of her videos and um, she has a lot to share. And I also think that Baby Lock, at least right now, is doing a free trial for their love of knowledge. There's a ton of great videos out there for the different machines that go into a lot more detail than I could, especially if you have a different machine than I do. So thanks again. Um, I will try to write out the names of the instructors that I mentioned. And if you, I hope this was helpful. If you feel like, you know, please leave me some comments and let me know what you liked, maybe what you didn't like. Um, I'm not a videographer, so I apologize for the shaky and some of the screenshots. And if you're wondering why I have these on, is because 
We go to Disney quite frequently, and with them being closed, since we can't go there, I like to bring Disney in my house sometimes. So when I'm sitting on conference calls with work, I like to throw these on just to kind of have some fun and, you know, do what you can to, to keep things fun and, and not too serious all the time. So um, I hope you enjoyed it. Have a good night. Thank you.